In this video, I will show you how you can turn your boring footage into cinematic one. This video is divided into seven segments or you can say seven simple steps. So here we have a very good footage. I downloaded this footage from Inveto. You can also get the link in the description below if you want this footage. So the first thing we need to do is stabilize our footage as you can see here our footage is a little bit shaky so i need to stabilize this footage for that i just need to go to effects if this effects panel isn't appear here just go to windows and here you got an option of effects i need to search warp stabilizer and as you can see we got a warp stabilizer right here just apply on your footage it takes some time because it just stabilize your footage frame by frame so here our stabilization is just complete so here you can see it just got a little bit difference so the smoothness of our footage it just increased so the next thing we need to do is slow down our footage if you watch some cinematic sequence you have an idea that cinematic sequence must be in a slow-mo or it speed is just slow so I need to slow down my footage my footage is already a little bit slow but I need to do some more I just decrease it 10 times but you can also decrease your footage 20 or 30 times according to your footage requirements so i really recommend you go with optical flow because some of your pixel of your footage may be broken by just decreasing the speed of your footage but if you go with optical flow it may be arranged according to your footage it does not interrupt your footage so just press ok and here you go our footage is just slowed down 10 times and it's just looking more good Good. The next thing we need to do is to add a zoom in effect. It's just looking good to add a zoom in effect in your footage and your footage it just zoom in slowly. So for that I just need to go to effects control and here I got an option of scale just make a keyframe right here and just go to last of your video like that and make a keyframe and change the scale value to 115 or 120 is actually on you so i'm just changing my value to 125 and it's just looking good for my footage you can also go with the same value if you want so the next step i'm going to do is to add a gaussian blur because i have an object in my footage if you don't have object in your footage then i really don't recommend you go with a gaussian blur because if you do that your footage looking weird but if you have an object like a bike car or some people in your footage then i really recommend you go with the gaussian blur because it's just looking great to your background of your footage for that just go to the effects and search a uh, blur and it just give you some really good blurs right here but I really go with a Gaussian blur so first of all I need to go with an adjustment layer because adjustment layer is really good to use for this purpose because we can change it later if we really want to change and I'm just apply a Gaussian blur on my adjustment layer I just go to the effects control and just create a mask right here so I just make a mask little bit according to my object of the footage and change the blur to 15 or 10 I think so 10 is really good because it's just not noticeable but if you go with more like 20 or 30 then it's looking weird and 10% are really good with that so make sure you can invert it so it's just looking like this and as you can see it's just looking really good you can also decrease it according to your requirements and 8% is really good for me you can also check it out this repeat edge point so it's just not looking weird for you now the most important point of a cinematic sequence is all is a color grading so for that I'm just go with a Lumetri color color grading is another concept and this video is not about color grading because if I go with a color grading in this video this video will be so longer so in this video I'm just apply my lurs that I recently uploaded video on YouTube you can also get a free lurs link in the description below so I just select an adjustment layer and go with my some of the lurs they are looking really good so this lurs is really good to use so I just change the intensity to 75 or 80 something but it's looking really not good much so I'm just go with the basic correction and make some changings
and here you go our color grading is just completed you can get the link of alerts in the description below it's free to download just go and check it out so here is the before and here is the after of our color grading alerts i will try my very best to upload a color grading tutorial in this month so make sure you subscribe my youtube channel for the latest updates so here you can see here is the before and here is the after of color grading so color grading i think so is the most important part of cinematic sequence so the next thing we can do is adding a black bars black bars is really good to use because in any cinematic sequence black bars working really good so i just create a new adjustment layer make it longer like that just go to effects and just search crop right here it's a simple method to create a black bars and now in a crop you can change the bottom value to 10 and top value to 10 as well you can also increase the size of your bars but the value of 10 is really good for me you can also use it or you can go with a 15 or 20 if you really want so the last step and the most important step is to add uh, music in our video because without a music it, this video is just not give you any feel or it's just looking weird so it is the most important thing in a cinematic sequence to add a best music and it's actually depend upon you to choose a best music for your sequence so I have a very good background music right here i downloaded it from mix kit you can also get the link in the description below if you want it by the way there are a lot of a website that provide you a free music like upbeat mix kit and some other website so you can choose a best music like a dramatic cinematic background music Now adjust your music according to your footage and just make a feel in your footage. And yep, yeah, here we go. We have a final product right here. So here is the before. And here is the after. So I hope you get the difference between before and after and I hope you like the final product. So yeah, here is the video of today. I hope you like this tutorial. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up and comment down below if you have any question. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one.